Hello everybody, Jim here, coming to you uh, at night, night time, lovely, lovely night, not really, it's actually uh, starting to rain and get windy out there, uh, so you might hear some of that, uh, because usually when I record these, I'm sitting at my computer desk uh, in the bedroom, but uh, not tonight, I, uh, I got my uh, mic here, the uh, the wireless, and I'm actually sitting on my couch and uh, drinking some Asahi Super Dry, as usual, my typical beer of choice, and so I decided I would give this a shot. Maybe this will be more fun on my couch. Everything's more fun on the couch, right? All the things we can do with a couch. Um, anyway, uh, tonight, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, something that, um, I don't know, kind of was like rattling around in my brain recently as I, um, I've taken sort of a short break, um, not from working on YouTube videos, but from publishing stuff on YouTube because I wanted to, um, I don't know, take a little time and maybe put a little more work into some, uh, some videos, try uh, something a little new and uh, see how that works out. But um, there's some stuff I saw online got me thinking about uh, motivations because um, trying to do some of this stuff was a little nerve wracking because you have to like coordinate because I didn't do it all by myself. I, you know, I needed uh, you know, cameramen here and there. So you got to like coordinate schedules with people. So you can have someone around a camera and you can only have someone for like an hour on this day. So it takes a couple of days. You got to come back like a, a day or two later and, um, well, you got to wear the same clothes and <laughs> you have to, uh, cause you're like, continuity, right? Like, okay, we have to come back in two days. I'm going to need to wear this t-shirt again. Um, but I was like, I don't know. I was wondering to myself, like, what's really the, the, like the purpose motivation for doing this when I could conceivably be working on like any other kind of content. I could be doing something, um, easier um, or just, you know, set it aside altogether and just, you know, I have a day job and I have hobbies and things like that. I'm like, why aren't I just doing that? Why am I, you know, doing all of this? The, the sometimes head, cause it's fun. Don't get me wrong. The shoots were fun. But at the same time, I was like, you know, I'd really like to just sit on my couch and drink beer and play Zelda today. Uh, so yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit about motivations, especially as like a smaller YouTuber, um, because I posted this question on Twitter, um, kind of like inquiring, you know, fellow content creators or whatever, um, you know, what keeps you motivated? And I think I worded, actually I actually have it right here in front of me. I said, um, aside from the money or the potential to make money, what is motivating you to continue creating content because that's like always sort of like the first thing that springs to people's minds is money and um, I mean eh, it's not really the motivation I think for most people just because like most people don't really make very much money on YouTube if they make any money at all um, so anyone who has the their channel is monetized they know how little you make in the way of AdSense. I think my best month on YouTube ever, I think I got like a quarter of a million views in that month and I made like $500, which was nice. Don't get me wrong, 500 bucks, sweet. Um, but yeah, it wasn't like a king's ransom and that was like the best month I've ever had in my life in like 11 years of uh, being on YouTube. So um, yeah, for people who aren't actually making money on YouTube, money is obviously not the motivator. It certainly wasn't for me when I first started. Like, I didn't even know that making money was like a possibility at that time. And I didn't really care e anyway. At the time I was in the military, you know, working, making a eh, decent living, but like a lot of, you know, your um, living expenses, all this stuff is like taken care of. Like, you don't make like a crazy amount of money, but it's... You get to hang on to all of it if you want to, like when I, that, for that maybe one year, no, it wasn't even a year, it was like 10 months when I was living in Texas before I came back to Japan. I saved like, what, 25, 30 grand? Um, so yeah, not bad. 
Um, so it wasn't uh, money that was motivating me at that time. I think it was just like, I don't know, I saw other people, you know, making YouTube videos on retro gaming and they were having fun and it seemed like a community was building. And it just seemed like something I wanted to be a part of, especially since like where I was at the time, um, I didn't really like, I couldn't really share much of my retro gaming hobby with my, uh, my friends and coworkers there. So YouTube was the next best thing. Um, I'm going to go, I guess, maybe into more detail about some of my own motivations, but I did want to read off, uh, some of this stuff on uh, Twitter. Some of the replies I got, I think one person did say it's always about the money, which um, not really, not if you're not really making any, um, you're, it's obviously a passion project if you're going to put all the time and effort into making videos or a series of videos knowing full well you're not going to get any money out of it, so it's obviously not about the money for everybody, um, but let's see here, uh, half circle forward Ed, Ed's a good guy, he's actually had a, done a guest review on the channel uh, once before, and it was uh, very good. He said, I've really enjoyed putting together videos that show a process that others can use and will find helpful or entertaining, like console mods, reviews, etc. I've had some great interactions with people, and that drives me to do more whenever I can. Um, and yeah, that's uh, I can definitely see that. Um, having watched Ed's videos in the past, you can tell when you're watching a, a channel um, made by someone who has a passion. And uh, especially for some of us, you know, I'm not going to say that Ed is old or anything, but uh, us older fellas who already have careers and we already have money and we already have all those kinds of things, um, we're not like chasing after that. So it's, it's not like a prime motivator. Uh, the Daddy Otaku, my channel is mostly just saving my playthrough highlights for posterity. If people watch and enjoy, it's a bonus, really. Yeah, so there you go. That's nice. Retro Drew. Retro Drew I've also had on the channel before. Uh, my love for video games. I can't lie, there are times where I have zero energy or ambition to make a video, but I always end up finding that passion pushing me forward. I just want to talk about games I like that I feel more people should know about. Uh, and that's, that's awesome. Again... I started a retro gaming channel just because I wanted to talk about video games and I wanted to share my game hunts and things like that. Um, I don't think, I don't think anyone's going to say now that, um, you know, the path to success is to start a retro game channel. There aren't a whole lot of those around, you know. Um, so, uh, yes, uh, Drew, uh, fantastic point there, sir. Uh, Basement Brothers. In our case, it definitely can't be for the money or views. We work on passion projects that are meaningful for us, and we hope that viewers will appreciate that. I also hope more viewers will someday discover and come to like what we do. And that's, you know, another kind of cool thing is you if you just you have like a creative passion or like an interest that you're trying to pursue. Um, you, you just you find that motivation to put it out there it's it's something that comes from within it's like an in, an inner desire to do that thing there's nothing kind of like external you know driving you to do it it's just something for whatever reason you have a passion for doing which is why again I have a gaming channel because I do have a passion for gaming and have since I was a little kid and that's why my new series is about bars and night spots because I also have a passion for for that I love to go out drinking what can I say uh, Joe D, which I believe, uh, same name, different game, great channel, creative outlet. I started pushing really hard on my channel when my wife was in law school because it was more flexible than doing live theater. And again, that's, you know, perfectly, uh, awesome point is that it's this great creative outlet that we all have access to, you know, it's not, um... You know, I was recently, I was watching a video by, on a channel called Decker Shadow, where he was talking about, um, you know, what motivated him to quit his day job and start, you know, doing YouTube full time. And he was, you know, talking about like where he was in his life and um, how he had been, you know, working the same job for years and wasn't getting anywhere. And, um, you know, he was looking at kind of like the life behind him and the potential life ahead of him. 
and he wanted to do something that could, you know, make him happy and something he could do that was creative. And it didn't matter, the circumstances of his life didn't matter. You know, he could still, he could write something, he could record something, he could turn on his camera. He does film reviews, uh, in case you don't know. Um, but he could, he could do that. He didn't need permission to do it. He didn't need a foot in the door. It's not Hollywood, it's not television or, you know, the music industry. It's not, you know, some um, exclusionary industry where you have to be a certain person or type of person or someone has to scout you or approve your entry into this industry. You can just do it. You can just turn on your camera, your microphone and, and give it a shot regardless of your status in uh, society. Um, so yeah, uh, we can all pursue our creative interests here, which is awesome, at least for now. I don't know, I hope YouTube never turns into like something like that where it's like, no, 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 only certain people can use it. Uh, and particularly those people that make money, the rest of you gotta get out of here. I hope that never happens. Bob from Retro RGB, promoting all the awesome new stuff coming out that deserves to be seen. Not letting anyone down. I could make more money sweeping floors, for the same amount of hours that's never once been a motivation and that's bob over at retro rgb is another person that just clearly has a passion for video games and uh, rgb modding and all that kind of stuff like he's constantly putting out new content updating people on new mods and like hardware and software all these other various things um so that's obviously a, a passion project for Bob. Uh, scruffy looking RGB, good friend of mine uh, here on YouTube and in real life as a matter of fact uh, for the chance to share things I love and create things with other folks who enjoy and appreciate the same things as me. Um, which I can assure you that's 100% uh, gen uh, genuine coming from Scruffy. Uh, scruffy, good guy, professional guy, works hard, works a lot, has a family. Uh, does all that and then in his spare time dude just loves his video games and uh, is having fun making uh, YouTube videos and that's actually how I came to meet him and become friends with him um, was through YouTube that's something we're going to touch on a little bit um, friendships that have formed out of all this I think a lot of people can relate to that um, who else do we have here Scarlet Sprites for someone who is artificially challenged, it's a roundabout way to create something. I also enjoy the arcade hobby and sharing. Of course, I have no idea why autocorrect changed this from artistically. Oh, artificially, I see. Someone who is artific uh, artistically challenged. Artistically challenged. Not art He's not artificially challenging himself. He's artistically challenged. Autocorrect, you've done it again. Um, for someone who is art artistically challenged, A-R-T, artistically challenged, it's a roundabout way to create something. Yeah, not all of us are terribly um, talented like in an artistic manner. Um, I, the most uh, artistic thing I've really ever tried to do in my life was, um, I mean, there was some stuff I made like in college or whatever, you could argue that, that was like creative or whatever. Um, but artistically speaking, the, I played guitar for a number of years and was really, you know, loving that, but I was never especially good at it. I'm not, you know, a great, I, I've tried drawing and doing other kind of art on paper in the past, not very good at it. I'm not a great, like, creative writer or uh, wasn't a great uh, musician. Um, yeah, I, I don't think I have the potential to be an artist, but yeah, YouTube, again, is one of those things where, like, even still, you can, if you have an idea or something you want to do, you can turn on your camera and your microphone and something comes out of it, something someone can enjoy. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Again, not so exclusionary. Um, I love playing games, says Retro Tuna. I love playing games, so may as well stream and review them. I enjoy the interaction with people. Another good point. YouTube's there, it's free to use for all of us. If you're already playing these games, doing these things anyway, it's a passion, it's a hobby, hey, why not? Throw some of it on YouTube and uh, chat with people. It's social media after all. Isn't that part of the, uh, the point of the whole thing? Um, Galaxian, or Gilaxian. When reviewers reach out to tell me my stream helps them uh, or when viewers reach out to tell me my stream helps them get through the day or tough times, 
Uh, that's incredibly motivating. Not only do I enjoy uh, chilling and talking and gaming with uh, arcade and retro gaming enthusiasts, but the fact that I can help people out, uh, that's rewarding in itself. And uh, I can attest to that too. Um, as you put out more and more content, you start to draw an audience. Um, you do get pleasure out of reading those those comments that say, wow, this was great, or I didn't know about this, thanks for informing me about this, or even some of those ones, I've, I've gotten comments on, on videos that say, you know, um, this day was really sucking, and then this video popped up in my subscription feed, and this helped me get through the day. Um, so, uh, but yeah, I mean, stuff like that is, is like great. Like, it's great to read that. Like, you didn't have any high aspirations really when you're making your video. Like this video I'm doing right now, I just really felt the need to just sit here and talk because I've been working on like a lot of content and stuff and I haven't been really pushing out very much. So I was just like, man, I'm not, you know, I'm working on a lot of stuff without really, you know, producing anything for anyone to watch. So I feel like I should sit down and talk about why I'm doing it. Um, but this video, there's no higher, you know, intentions than that, but you know, maybe somebody will really get something out of it. You never know, you know, you never know who's watching or listening or, or how they might connect with what you're saying or doing. Um, that's why I, it's great that there is a comment section. I mean, we can learn about that. Um, Dennis, my good man, Din Densetsu, uh, aside from the desire to create and keep the cre creative juices flowing, uh, this guy, and then he's got a picture of Mega Man, because Dennis is the biggest Mega Man fan I've ever met, and he just wanted to do a series dedicated to Mega Man as a passion project. And Dennis also is a, a, an, a filmmaker, as a matter of fact. He's got one film under his belt. He's uh, planning another one. Um, he is just an all-around uh, creative dude and uh, talented as well. And so YouTube is like keeping him, I guess, keeping him sharp. And uh, he gets to do something uh, he enjoys. Um, let's see, who else do we have here? We had one other thing. And, um, well, I'll, uh, two more. I'll uh, go ahead and go there. Shmup Junkie, uh, another guy here on YouTube that uh, I really enjoy watching his videos. They're very well produced. And again, a guy who obviously has a passion for what he's doing. The guy loves his shoot 'em ups. And he says that for the love and for the hobby of it. YouTube ads is chump change unless you have hundreds of thousands of subs or more, which is true. Uh, I'd advise anyone doing it for money to not waste their time as even McDonald's pays exceptionally more uh, if they're doing it to share within the world then it's a go and uh, that's a good point again um, that's why I say motivation as a smaller youtuber um, because you can put out plenty of content and there has to be some other motivating factor aside from money because you're not you're probably not gonna make any money or not anything like substantial you need to have like a, a, a desire to do it that comes from something inside a, a creative pursuit or or something passionate or or something social um, and I was gonna do uh, one more here where are you you're like way down at the bottom uh, the good old man uh, radical Reggie uh, he chimed in um, he said the people to be honest, it's the only reason I'm still active on YouTube. Creating videos takes a lot of time, editing, capturing footage, etc. As long as they stay happy with my content, I'll continue to make it. And um, that's uh, so, Reggie is one of those people that I've seen him on, a, you know, a lot of channels. A lot of people associate him with Metal Jesus, but I've seen he's. Uh, been on uh, Saramaru's channel and um, oh Joel Valley uh, uh, yeah Media Glitch that's it Media Glitch is escaping me it's it's late damn it um, but Reggie's one of those people that uh, quote unquote he gets around he's been on my channel as a matter of fact um, so he's someone that's definitely taken this as uh, an opportunity to like uh, make it a social occasion um, and that's something I'm going to go ahead and uh, get that Twitter out of my face. I'm going to go ahead and agree with Reggie on that is that meeting people has been like a big part of what's like kept me 
interested in doing YouTube because a lot of people lose interest. Um, you know, sometimes you think to yourself, man, I remember that channel from like however many years ago. I wonder whatever happened. And you go check the channel and they just haven't published anything in a long time just because, you know, they lose interest. And that's fine. You know, if you don't want to do it, don't do it. Go go find something better, more, you know, productive to do with your time. Absolutely. But uh, again, when I, I started this channel in 2011, I want to say, 2010, 2011, um, it was because I was rediscovering my passion for retro video games and I saw a growing community on YouTube and I wanted to be a part of that and, and pretty quickly um, and it was you know you could say it was considerably different like 11 or 12 years ago on YouTube um, but in pretty short order I was becoming very friendly with lots of people on YouTube lots of people with gaming channels um, you know jumping in on podcasts uh, the first podcast I ever did actually yeah yeah the first podcast I ever did I think it was in 2011 I think it was called the average gamer podcast and it was Cody and it was uh, Blake who I believe passed away unfortunately and uh, Jordan who Jordan went on to be like very successful on YouTube uh, I think now his channel is called Jordan Fringe and he's, yeah, he, he's done very well for himself on YouTube, but that was like my first time ever doing a podcast. Um, shortly after that, Hate Bit Podcast with uh, Alpha Omega Sin and um, Yell Chaos, and then that carried on into the future where like, I went back to do that podcast many more times and became very friendly with everybody uh, associated with that podcast. Again, Alpha and... Uh, Chaos and, and Razor Fist and uh, whoever else, Larry. I think that was how I got uh, got acquainted with Larry Bundy Jr. Uh, was just from doing that show. And you know, awesome guys, very funny, very uh, very fun talking with those guys. I think um, doing the Newfoundland Gamers podcast at one point with Michael B. the Game Genie and Keep the Joking Gamer, who again another person who's who's uh, no longer with us, unfortunately. And then just some rando that Keeb just pulled off the internet somewhere. Um, Mike didn't know who it was. I had, I didn't know who, who that person was. The other host, Derek, could not uh, do the show. Um, so Keeb just went and grabbed some rando. And uh, it was some like annoying kid. <laughs> it's so, oh, it's, that was something he would have done. Um, but yeah, just getting to know people, and to this day, people I'm friends with, again, like I mentioned, uh, mentioned Scruffy Looking RGB, he's a buddy of mine, we hang out, talk games, you know, that's always fun, Sam, Sam is another person that I met through YouTube, Jimmy Hoppa, uh, good friend of mine, we hang out whenever we can, I was gonna say Dennis, but I actually met Dennis in, in college, not through YouTube, um, Johnny Millennium, another person that I've gotten to know, um, while, uh, you know, through, through my years on YouTube, doing podcasts and videos together and just chatting and just getting to know like these really awesome people. And that's been sort of like motivation and help helpful because you, you can work with these people. Um, I say work, I'm doing air quotes with my fingers here. Um, you can work, you can do YouTube videos with other people and it's like really fun because you can like plan these things out. And again, like on a like creative level, it is, again for someone who doesn't have like pretty much like I have like no artistic talent it is nice to to work on something and try your best to be creative um, or just uh, something that expresses like your passion for something and then eventually you can like see a final product and you can be like happy with that you're like wow I made that you know, it's almost like a little kid like draws a picture and you put it on the refrigerator and I made this. It's a, this is like the adult version of that. That's what YouTube is. YouTube videos are a bunch of kids drawings with crayon on a refrigerator with magnets. I made this. That's what, some of them are like really great drawings. Some of them are not so great drawings, but it's a refrigerator with unlimited magnets and we can all put our drawings on it. And, uh, and that's awesome. So, uh, yeah, I mean, getting to know people and just having something like creative that you can do and, um, you know, seeing that 
that final thing that you made and being happy with it and being proud of that. Um, that's really cool. And again, um, it, it, yeah, a hobby. I mean, when you do have some downtime, like not every day is a busy day. And sometimes you want to just sit down and play some video games. And it's nice if you have like a thought in your head, like while you're playing this game, hey, you know, I like this or don't like that, etc., etc. If you've got a spare 15 minutes, write some of that shit down. Say it into a microphone or a camera and then spit it out onto YouTube. See what happens, you know? You never know. Anyway, um, good stuff though. And then at the end of the day, if you can make a few bucks, then bless you. You are one of the lucky ones. Congratulations to all of the folks on YouTube who are making money doing something that they enjoy doing. They don't gotta, I don't know, work their job at Kroger anymore. They can just make their YouTube videos and they can be happy. Congratulations. I do not begrudge anyone their happiness. And uh, I don't think you should either. What's that old saying? You should only look into your neighbor's bowl to make sure that they have enough. That's nice. That's a nice sentiment. I'll end with that. I'll end with that and the refrigerator thing. Because I did come up with a <laughs> refrigerator analogy right off the top of my head. Maybe someone else has come up with it before. I guarantee you, I promise you, I did not steal it. I just thought of that. So our refrigerator magnets, blah, blah, blah. Whatever I said, I thought it was kind of clever as I was saying it. You may also think so. Um, if you made it to the end of this video, uh, what the hell? What am I looking at on, like, there's just a bunch of Netflix ads. You might like this. Um, jackass. There you go. Uh, if you made it to the end of the video, you can throw jackass into a comment or something. I'll be happy to see that. Oh uh, yeah, let me know down in the comments. If you yourself publish content on YouTube, uh, what is it that motivates you? And if you don't, what would motivate you to do so? Or maybe you wanted to, you just haven't yet because you feel like something's holding you back. I don't know, some people, they're, just, they're not uh, too keen on uh, exposing themselves to the public. That's cool too. Anyway, I feel like I've been talking forever. Who the hell listens to these <laughs> for this long? Jeez, and this beer ain't getting any colder. Um, all right, so uh, thanks everybody for listening. I hope the audio came out okay on this. I'm literally sitting here on my sofa with this, this damn pen mic. If the audio is terrible, I don't give a damn. <laughs> I'm publishing this anyway. I don't feel like saying all this again. Anyway, thanks for listening, everybody, and I will catch you on the next one. Take care. Goodbye.